Hey guys, today we are going to look at seven cards that have slowly but steadily gone up in price. And they are very interesting ones all across Legacy, Modern, and Standard, of course, which we will start. Chandra was a card that I said would go up in price, and it has gone up in price. Now, for you to make any profit on it, you have it has to hit $30. Previously, I said it was 18 to 20, which it is still 18 to 20. You can still buy a copy of this on eBay for 18 near mint. Um, I don't believe it has free shipping now, it looks like. Oh, price plus shipping. So yeah, you can get it for 18.50. I don't expect this card to be much cheaper. Now might be the last opportunity for you to get it under 20. It has been ticking up. It is a very strong card. The only reason it didn't see that much play was or was not as dominant as the other decks. A for Work Marvel played it somewhat. The Tamir decks played it somewhat. The Energy decks. But now that they are kind of gone, A for Work Marvel deck is gone completely. Sahili Raw deck is gone completely. And the Delirium decks are pretty much gone. After rotation, it should get much, much stronger. The next card was Goro's Vengeance. When this first came out, it was not highly good. It was in Betrayers of Kamigawa. It was not a card that you wanted to open in a booster pack. It was decent. But that was it. So what happened to the card? The card is very cheap. It is an instant, which adds more utility to it. The splice on Arcane, I feel like that was the part I got confused on when I was younger. This came out when I was in high school. And I was like, wow, this is the worst Arcane spell ever. <laughs> Let me play this other one that lets me draw one card. So my evaluation of these cards were very bad. Still bad today, but definitely not as bad as that. And it is a $50 card. It shows you that in modern, a card can be $30 and still be worth buying, right? It can go from 30 to 50 and it's still possible. Not many cards do it and you have to be a special card to do it, but this is one of them. All right, next we're going to go on to the reserve list. Uh, Cradle has always been quite interesting um, in terms of its price. You can see that paper is supposedly 224 but on eBay, there's 158, but I'm sure that they are not near mint. Otherwise, they would say so. Cradle, 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 where to go with this card? It has just steadily been going up. When I broke 200, I was like, wow, yeah, I broke 200. It's never going to get more expensive, but then it does. It is on the reserve list. Every single green deck, assuming that you have any creatures at all, wants this card. Really easy to go infinite with some type of untap ability. And it has slight play in Legacy with the Elves. Obviously, it's not playable in Modern. One of the better lands, and I, it's always been a good land. It's never been bad, but I remember this at $25. That is the price, and I was like, oh, no one's going to pay $25. And this was, after, this was quite some time, probably before ED8s became really big. Good cards are good cards, and no matter what they are, especially if they are on the reserve list. We don't talk often about cards on the reserve list because my gut feeling tells me there's not much buy-in. There's not much... People are selling it for a lot of money. So I'm not... Ugh, there's not much room for it to grow, in my opinion. You're going to buy a $225 card and hope it grows to, what, 250 But you still got to sell it. Anyway, I much prefer something like this, which is Noble Hierarch. Uh, Noble Hyok is very good, and it is the model card of what you would want to buy. It was reprinted as a rare, so it was not a mythic, and its price tanked. Now, the Conflux one is, I sold a bunch of these for like 30 or $35, like multiple play sets of them, uh, before realizing, oops, this was a mistake, because uh, it kept going up in price. $35 at the time was not bad. Um, I did sell it to a subscriber. Uh, so $35 at the time, I, the way I did it was you find me a price in TCG player, and even if it has shipping, as long as you order over $50, just calculate it from multiple places. Just find the lowest price, give me a link, and I will sell you the card. 
And that is what happened with Noble Hierarch, which I should not have sold in hindsight for $35 for multiple play sets. <laughs> Next is Bitter Blossom. Bitter Blossom, I, I don't know if a lot of players remember. This was a very powerful card. It was so powerful, it was banned and modded. Not, not much has happened with it. It's actually quite weak. Uh, or I guess not, I wouldn't say quite weak, but the tribal base isn't really that good. And creating a 1-1 one -one is not something that you should be doing. Yes, you... There's not a true control deck that will take advantage of the incremental uh, token generation. Which is kind of sad. It, it is sad that it, everyone is turn 4 kill or get killed. I mean, that's how modern is right now. So no one's going to wait and grab the advantage with Bitter Blossom. Now, that being said, I do love the card. I think it is due for a price increase. It is $31 right now. Seems good. Um... Assuming it is not reprinted again, it was reprinted as a mythic, which is okay because it's a mythic from 2015 and we're in 2017. All right. One of these swords that I absolutely love is Feast and Famine at $23. Uh, why I like Feast and Famine, it resemble it is great in ED8, big plus. And I think it's going to have some modern playability. It has tier like 4 modern playability right now. But it has abilities that you really want. Uh, and worst case scenario is just an EDH card. Anytime it says uh, when you deal combat damage to a player, discard a card. That player discards a card and you untap all lands you control. Anytime you see that untap all lands you control. All those cards are valuable. They banned Prophet of Kufix, but what Seaborn Muse is like, well, how, what is that, $20 now? Something ridiculous for what it is. And then the Awakening one from Stormhold. I don't know. There's a bunch of these things that untap all your lands, and they've always been valuable. So at $23, I don't see how that's a risk. The upside is, of course, modern playability. All right, to end off the video, I will talk about another one of my favorite cards of all time. Lily of the Veil. Now, it's interesting, right? Because you have Lily of the Veil, which on paper is $83, but there are eBay auctions by now for quite a bit cheaper than that. So there is a big price gap between what people are actually buying. As you can see, the buy list is $54, but the paper quote value is $83. That is a very gap. That's a very big gap on a buy list of this type. Now, do I love it? I love it. I, in fact, like this version of it better than the original Innistrad, although the original Innistrad is slightly more expensive because of the little hollow foil. Lily of the Veil is one of the most counterfeited cards in all of Magic. If I had to point at one card that was being counterfeited, it would be this one. I want that hollow foil. I have changed out all my lilies into hollow foil lilies, where it has a little stamp on the bottom. Just because I don't want to deal with it. You might say, oh, it's so obvious, it's a counterfeit, so obvious. Yeah, it's obvious, but like maybe that player doesn't know, maybe they do know. Either way, like it seems bad, right? It seems bad. But if they have a hall of oil, I'm like, okay, cool. I can trade for it and not really worry about it. I mean, if I trade for a regular in Lily and I like, wait, dude, this is fake. Then you get into that conversation and that's not something I want to spend my time on. Hey, did you know it's fake? Are you trying to trade fake cards? Or hey, did someone trade this fake card to you? So either a person is epically disappointed or epically disappointed that they couldn't scam you, right? So... Yeah, anyway, I, I like the Lily. I think long-term wise, given what I know about counterfeits, this particular Lily is in a special case. Counterfeits will continue to produce Lilianas. Why is that the case? Modern. Modern is a popular format, more popular than Legacy right now, and C is the most one of the most expensive cards in the modern format, even after the reprint. So it's kind of like that scenario where, hey, Counterfeiters, which card would you want to reprint? Why don't you reprint Liliana of the Veil? 
because she will always have value and always be almost close to a hundred dollar bill. And they'll be like, yeah, great advice. That's exactly what we're gonna do. So out of all the counterfeits I've seen, Lily of the Veil vale is probably the most common by far. Like, uh, you know, fetch lands are common, but they're less common now after the reprint. But Lily, still incredibly, uh, incredibly common as a counterfeit card. So I want the holofoil, I want the stamp. They're not going to go the extra step to do it because why would they? There's no reason for them to do that. Incur like additional expense for no reason. I like it. I like this Lily a lot. Anyway, that is it. Bye guys.